All right, in this video, we're going to remind our brains on how to solve quadratic equations so that we can apply it to similar triangles. We could solve it graphically, looking at a coordinate plane where our parabola crosses the x-axis, and that will be usually in two spots unless the parabola is not crossing the x-axis at all, and then we get a no solution. We call these the zeros, the roots, the solutions. We could use math if, in our quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c, if there is no bx term, then we could just solve it using simple math, where we would square root both sides. We could use the quadratic formula. We know the quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Or we could try factoring, where we take the product of our a and c terms, and we try to find the sum of our b term, and then factor into binomials. So let's remind our brains quadratic formula so that we can use it and apply it to all of our quadratic equations. The formula is ax squared plus bx plus c. Quadratic equations can have two, one, or no solutions. And one way to determine is to look at your discriminant. Your discriminant in the quadratic formula is what's under the square root. So here, reminding our brains of the quadratic formula, this we call the discriminant. It will help us to decide how many answers there will be. If it's positive, we're going to get 2. If it's 0, we're going to get 1. And if it's negative, we're going to get no solutions. That's because of this plus minus or Plinus, if you will. When you add the square root of a positive number, you're going to get two possible solutions. When you add or subtract a square root of a zero, you're going to get the same solution. So that's why you only get one solution when it's zero. And if you add and subtract the square root of a negative, you can't take the square root of a negative, not in the real number system. You'll see what you can do with that in Algebra 2. But in the real number system, we would get no solution. So let's take an example. Let's look at 2x squared plus 4x minus 7. The a term is what's in front of the x squared term. So the a is 2, the b is 4, and c is negative 7. I like to analyze the discriminant first, b squared minus 4ac. And I see that I have 4 squared. And when you're plugging a number in for a variable, make sure you put it in parentheses minus 4 times a times c. This is going to give me 4 squared, this is 72. So I have a positive value. Now I'm going to plug it into negative b, which would be negative 4, plus or minus the square root of my discriminant, all over 2 times a, 2 times 2, which is 4. <clears throat> this is going to give me, I go through and I do the plus, negative 4 plus square root of 72 all over 4. And I'll plug that into my calculator and I get about 1.121. Then I'm going to go through and do the minus, negative 4 minus square root of 72 all over 4. And I get approximately negative 3.121. So these are my two answers. These would be my roots, my solutions, my zeros. Let's practice another one. Here we've got the a value is 4, the b value is negative 3, and the c value is 6. So when I'm testing out b squared minus 4ac, I see that I have negative 3 squared minus 4 times a times c, and this is going to give me negative 87. Because that's a negative value, this has no solution because you can't take the square root of a negative. So we'd put no solution here. And let's go over here. Let's try one more before we start on similar triangles. Here I have an A value of 1, a B value of 3, and a C value of negative 4. I'm going to plug that into my B squared minus 4AC. 4 times 1 times negative 4. This is going to give me 25. So it's a positive, so I'm going to plug this in. I get negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 25 all over 2. 
Then I'm going to go through and do the plus. Negative 3 plus, square root of 25 is 5, so I'm going to put 5. And so this is going to give me 2 over 2, which is 1. And I have negative 3 minus 5 over 2, which is going to give me negative 8 over 2, which is negative 4. So my two solutions, my roots, my zeros, where the parabola is crossing the x-axis is at 1 and negative 4. Let's apply that to similar triangles. So here I've got two similar triangles, given two similar triangles. I know that the 39 corresponds to the x plus 6. They're both a hypotenuse. So I'm going to say 39 is to x plus 6 as, and I've got 2x minus 4 is to 24. 2x minus 4 is to 24. Now what I have here is a proportion, and I'm going to cross multiply to solve. So I get 39 times 24 is equal to these two binomials being multiplied, x plus 6 times 2x minus 4. So over here I get 936, and over here I need to distribute each of these terms into both terms of the second one, giving me 2x squared minus 4x plus 12x minus 24. I'm going to add my like terms. I get 8x. And then the next thing I want to do is, when we were solving for the quadratics, we needed it to be equal to 0. So to get it equal to 0, I'm going to subtract 936 on both sides. That's going to give me 0 equals 2x squared plus 8x minus 960. Now I've got a quadratic. So what I'm going to do is find my b squared minus 4ac. So I've got 8 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 960. I plug that in, and I get 7744. So I put that into the quadratic formula, negative b plus or minus the square root of 7744, all over 2 times a, which is 4. And this is a perfect squared number, so I get 88 divided by 4. Now i got to go through and do the plus, which would be negative 8 plus 88 divided by 4. That's going to give me 20. And I go through and do the minus, negative 8 minus 88 divided by 4. And that's going to give me negative 24. Now because we're in geometry class and we're plugging these back in for the side lengths, I know that this negative 24 is not going to work. Right here, negative 24 plus 6 is going to give me a negative value, and I'm not going to have a negative side length. So x is 20 in this case, because 20 is the only one that would work for the side lengths. Pause the movie. Try this one on your own. Keeping in mind, you got to get this length here, which is going to be x plus 10. Try this on your own, and then press play when you are finished. All right, so we know that we have 10 is to x plus 10 as x plus 2 is to x plus 14. I'm just setting up our corresponding sides as proportional. So now I've got 10 times x plus 14 is equal to x plus 10 times x plus 2. I'm going to distribute this in. So I'm going to get 10x plus 140 equals, and on this side I get x squared plus 2x plus 10x plus 20. I'm going to simplify this. Now I'm going to get the 10x and the 140x on the other side. So I'm going to subtract 10x. And I'm going to subtract 140 here in a second. Now I'm going to subtract 140. So I get 0 equals x squared plus 2x minus 120. So I've got a quadratic. It's equal to 0. I'm going to do my b squared minus 4ac, which is 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 120. 
So that's going to give me 484. So I get negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 484 all over 2, which is negative 2 plus or minus the square root, square root of that. That's a perfect squared number. I get 22 all over 2. I got to go through and do the plus, negative 2 plus 22 over 2, and go through and do the minus, negative 2 minus 22 all over 2. This one gives me 10. This one gives me negative 12. And I know that the negative 12 is not going to work because when I plug it in for a side length, I will get a negative number. So it's when x is 10. And that's how we use quadratic equations within similar triangles.